All right, here's number two video in our mini series, Excel Magic Tricks, dealing with consecutive numbers. Now, in our last video, we did conditional formatting. But in this video, we want to extract records with three or more consecutive numbers using Power Query. And we want to link the Power Query output to the value in this cell. Then when we change it and refresh the query, everything will update. Now, we will get to see something quite unusual about Power Query. But first, let's just bring this single number into Power Query. Now, I want to name this cell right here 3 hurdle. And since I have a word and a cell, I can use the keyboard Control-Shift-F3. That creates names from selection. And it's smart enough to know where the label is. So when I click OK, that name, using the name box, becomes the name of that cell. That is one way to get something into Power Query, using defined names. When we have proper data sets, then we use the Excel table feature. Now I want to bring this into Power Query. I could go up to Data and from Table Range, but there's a great keyboard inside a table or a defined name. And the keyboard is right click key G. So I have the defined name selected, right click key, and there's the G. All I have to do is tap G. And now that defined name has been brought into the Power Query editor. Now I don't need change type, so I'm going to X that out. And I want to extract the value, so I need to drill down, right click the number, drill down. Now I have a single number that's connected to the Excel worksheet. There's the name. Home, close and load, close and load to. Only create a connection, click OK. And so we have that number there that we can change later inside of Power Query. Now let's click inside the Excel table, right click G. I'm going to rename this consecutive weights and enter. Now I'm going to change the data type here because I don't want date time, I want date. We'll replace it. And we want to use the Group By feature. Now when I come to Weights, right click Group By, normally what Group By will do is it will, from the selected column, create a unique list and then make some calculation. Now at the top, the Weight column says the column we're grouping by. We want to click Advance because we want to make two calculations initially. Our first calculation will be Count. Count the rows that match the grouping. Add aggregation. This one we're going to call records because the calculation is please give me all records or all rows that match that grouping. Now when I click OK, this is not going to give us what we want. If I click on the grouping 300, that's a table with all of the records that match 300. And that's not what I want. I only want to group when the numbers are consecutive. Now when you do a standard group by, up in the formula bar, there's the table.group. There are three arguments in this function. Change type, that's the previous step we're acting on. This is the column we're grouping by. And then in list within a list, there's two calculations, count and records. Well, guess what? There is a fourth argument. So let's just see what happens if I click the gear icon to open back up Group By dialog box. I do not see an option for the fourth argument. When you use Group By, it does not allow you to change that fourth argument, at least not using this dialog box. The default is Group Kind Global, and it gets a unique list, makes a calculation. But if we come up to the formula bar, and here's the fourth argument, comma. There it is, group kind. Now, when we add the fourth argument, unfortunately, this gear icon goes away, and we can no longer use that really convenient dialog box. Now, we're going to try group kind global. That's the default. We do not need to put this in. But just to show you, if you do and hit Enter, it doesn't change anything. What we want to do, but it does make that gear icon go away, so you cannot use that dialog box. But And that's why we don't ever put the fourth argument in when we're doing the standard group by. But now we want group kind local. All this does is now 
it groups together consecutive items from the selected column. So when I hit Enter, our first record does not have a consecutive 300. There's just a single one. But for our second record, there's three consecutive 400s. Now, one thing we want to make sure and do is sort. Really, when you're dealing with consecutive, you assume that everything's sorted. And it should be from our Excel table. We could add a step up here right before we group. Let's go change type and sort by date. This is sort of not necessary because I think we, by default, have it sorted in the worksheet. But sort ascending, it'll ask if we want to insert. So now the Power Query output will not be broken. But if we sort in the worksheet, our solution in the worksheet would be broken. There's our grouped records. Now we can, from the count, filter, number filters, greater than or equal to. For the time being, we'll type a 3. Click OK. Now we have the two records we want, because there were only two weights that had three or more consecutive items. But let's come up and connect this table.selectRows to our hurdle define name query. There it is, hurdle. I see it. I hit Tab. I hit Enter. Now right click, remove other columns, expand. We want date and weight. We don't want to use original. Click OK. Now we can close and load, close and load to. I'm going to put this on the existing J9, click OK. Now this solution is not built with formulas. It's built with Power Query. So when I change this to 2, of course, like a pivot table, Power Query doesn't automatically update until we right click Refresh. But sure enough, that is updating. Control Z, Z. Z. I'm going to leave it with 3. All right, so fun with consecutive occurrences. We saw conditional formatting and then Power Query to extract. Next video, we'll see a crazy formula to count the max consecutive occurrences for each item in a unique list. All right, we'll see you next video.